Chemical bonds, forces of attractions that keep atoms together. Right, okay. Now, once they're together, we know that it takes energy to break a bond. So, you know what? What we really define a chemical bond as, as is an, it's an amount of energy that actually keeps these atoms together. So, how can we figure out how much energy is possessed in a chemical bond? How can we describe that? All right, so for instance, now let's take ionic compounds and the formation of ionic compounds, and let's do it very simple where we just take uh, uh, a metal and a non-metal and put them together and form something called a binary ionic compound. Binary is just two, right? So take a look. Here's lithium solid. You know that lithium is, is an alkali metal. If we react it with fluorine gas, according to this equation, balancing for a half F2, to get one mole of LiF solid, which is an ionic compound, how much energy does that take to be able to make this chemical here, which has a bond in it? And Well, these have bonds in it too that actually have to be broken, right? So, what is the, the change in the energy from the amount of energy we have to add to break bonds to the amount of energy that forms or is released when the bonds form? That's called the delta H, or the change in enthalpy. And when we get to the energetics unit, I'll really describe that quite fully. But for right now, just remember, it's just going to be a change in the total amount of energy involved here, potential energy, in the chemical bonds. Chemical bonds are potential energy. Okay, so, well, how are we going to get this to happen? Well, just like I said, you're going to have to add energy to take lithium and turn it into an ion. Okay, so if you think about lithium atoms all bonded together in a solid, what do you have to do? Well, you have to heat them up until they melt into a liquid. And then you have to heat up that liquid to heat it up to turn it into a gas. And then you have to strip away electrons, and only then can you strip away the electrons from the lithium. Remember the definition for ionization energy, which was the amount of energy that you have to add to remove one mole of electrons from a gaseous element. That's what we talked about in the atomic theory uh, unit. So here's the deal. If you want to take that and, and get it ready to bond with the fluorine, what do you have to do? You got to take the lithium solid and turn it into lithium gas. So that's called energy of sublimation. And so the energy of that is 161 kilojoules. You need to add 161 kilojoules of energy to turn one mole of lithium solid into lithium gas. That's the first step. And notice that there are a bunch of steps that we have to go through here to be able to get to this equation. Hess's law of additivity, which is covered in the energetics unit too, will tell us that we can just then take all of these equations, and if they all add up to make a net equation, we can add all of their heats up to be able to come up with the net heat for that equation. Okay, so I hope I, that, that makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, just look at the chemical energetics uh, uh, video, and it'll explain that too. So now that we've taken the lithium and turned it into a gas, now we can actually remove the electrons here. So what's that? That's losing electrons here. The lithium gas becomes lithium ion by taking away an electron. That electron has got to be given to somebody. In the chemical bond that forms, it's given to the non-metal. But the change in that energy is 520 kilojoules because if you want to take the electron away from lithium as a gas, that requires energy. So now, we need to, we got an energy that's required here, energy that's required here. Well, wow, I thought when bonds form, energy is released. Well, not right away, energy is required first. And then we got to deal with the fluorine. The lithium's ready to bond. It's saying, I'm ready to lose that electron to you. And the fluorine says, whoa, 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 I'm not ready yet. I got to turn into an F. And we only need one F here, but you've got to take the F2 and break it in half, right? You got you to gotta, you gotta dissociate that that F from each other. So that's called the energy of dissociation to be able to remove fluorine from fluorine. But you know what? We only need one of those F's, so we're going to balance the reaction for a half here. Sometimes you'll notice that a textbook question will give you the energy, like if you only need one F here, but this was an F2, they'll still have F2 plus makes two F's here, and they'll give you the heat that's doubled here, but you only want half of everything because you only want one F. So you multiply by half, get rid of the 2 here, make it a 1, and that gives you 1F to deal with because that's all we need up there. I know that sounds kind of complicated. You'll see examples of that. Now, how much energy does it take to break that bond between the Fs? Looks like 77 kilojoules to be able to do that for a half F2. All we've got so far is energy required, required, required all the time. But now, 
as the fluorine gains an electron, or the electron's coming from n equals infinity, and it's coming into the atom, energy's being released because you could say that, like, you know, there's a force of attraction happening for the electron and the nucleus of the fluorine atom, and as the electron comes in, energy is released. And that's called the electron affinity energy. So sublimation energy, ionization energy, dissociation energy, and this is going to be, again, electron affinity energy. And since energy is released, we make it a negative. And if we added all these together right now, now we're starting to get into the negatives and energy is being net amount of energy, the change in energy, that's what that triangle means, change, is starting to be negative, and negative just means exothermic, and exothermic means energy is released, right? Then finally, we've got an Li positive and an F negative, they're, they're going to come together now, force of attraction positive to negative, bonds are forming here, and energy is released, but oh, they're going from gas immediately to a solid, and that's what happens with ionic compounds. Bang, the gases come together, they drop down into a solid, and tons of energy is released as Li's and F's come together in one-to-one -one ratios in crazy clumps that make an ionic crystal. That crystal has a very definite shape called a lattice. So this is called the lattice energy. And lattice energies are the hugest amount of energy releases in these molecules, these ionic crystals. Because as they all bunch together, that energy is released when we go from gas to solid here. And this huge amount of net energy released means this, that when you add all these equations together, and by the way, if you do that with all of these equations, certain elements can't, well, by the way, what I mean add together, all of these guys here form all of these guys here when you add all this together. But there are chemicals here that are the same on both sides. Look at that, Li, salt, Li gas and Li gas. I cancel them out because they're going, to re they're going to cancel out because they're reactants and products in the reaction if I added all of these together. So I'm not even going to, I'm not, I'm not going to add the, uh, all the equations together and get this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this makes this, 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 this. If I've got like terms on each side, I'm going to get rid of them. That's like a little math talk, right? Well, look at this. And I've got one electron here canceling one electron. Here's an Li gas here. Here's an Li gas here. Here's a one-half F2 get. Well, that doesn't cancel with anything, so I'll leave that alone. But that F negative there, does that cancel with anything? Yeah, with that one right there, joint, joint. And then what about this F gas here, joint, joint. When you cancel out all of that, this is what you get. Look at this. This plus this makes this, and that's our net equation. And so if you can do that and add all these together to make this, then you can add all these together and you get this, negative 617 kilojoules. What does that negative tell you? Energy is released, because when these bonds form for the LIF, energy is released. Hey, and then you can compare ionic compounds to each other and see which one releases the most energy overall. That's pretty cool. Oh, and I wanted to mention, you might not see this in this form on, um, uh, when you're studying it or when your teacher teaches it to you, and that's because these equations can actually be incorporated into, well, if you take some of these, uh, let me just explain it this way, taking these individual equations and actually writing them as a cycle of where, where energy is being absorbed and then energy is being released, you might see these equations written um, in a kind of a cycle. Uh, where energy being absorbed and released makes a little bit of a, a loop kind of thing. And that's just called the Born-Haber cycle. So when your teacher says, I'm, we're doing the Born-Haber cycle, what you're really doing is this stepwise breaking down of these chemicals here, uh, these elements here, in order to form a compound here. Born-Haber cycle.